So this model guided optimization relies on the use and availability of models that can correlate molecular structure with their function. Um, this has been a rapidly growing area in machine learning as applied to chemistry, but there's still some significant challenges in how we think about building these models. So molecules, unlike images, are not inherently numerical. We don't think about describing a molecular structure, which is this very complex shape in terms of simple numerical vectors and matrices, like machine learning tools are often designed to take as input. And so we have to be very thoughtful about how we represent molecular structures so that these machine learning models can learn how to uh, infer patterns, right, and how their structure relates to their function. So we're working on some new techniques for how you actually analyze a molecular structure. And some of these are based on the ideas of graph neural networks, considering molecular structures as graphs where atoms are nodes in a graph and bonds are edges in a graph. But we're also thinking beyond that because molecules are these very complex sort of three-dimensional structures that are flexible and they, they change their shape and orientation depending on their environment and the temperature. So we're working on strategies to take that into account essentially and to have a more nuanced understanding of, of what it means to have a molecular structure and how best to capture that as inputs to these models. One of the bottlenecks to advancing these tools and advancing these methods is having good test cases and applications on which we can benchmark our performance. So there's some specific challenges we're addressing involving stereochemistry of molecules. So two molecules that are mirror images of each other will have different functions in many environments, including in the human body. When we develop new computational techniques that try to take that into account, we need tasks, right? We need specific goals to measure our progress in developing new methods. And so we're working on developing also some, what we call synthetic benchmarks, right? So coming up with data that mirrors real experimental data, but is defined in a more controlled environment so that we can rapidly iterate on these new models and these new methods um, until they're ready and mature enough to apply to applications like drug discovery. Another project that we're working on is the generation of new molecular structures. This is a rapidly growing field that only started a few years ago, and it essentially inverts the typical paradigm of how we discover new molecules. So typically, we will take sort of machine learning models or property prediction models, we can query them with a molecule of interest and it will tell us what it believes the properties to be. It, it predicts or it simulates what the properties are. But recently there have been uh, these new inverse design models or generative models that take the model, trains to predict a property, and essentially let it directly generate a new molecular structure. And so it can create a new molecule that we haven't queried it with explicitly that's predicted to have some sort of optimal property profile. And so this notion of inverse design is a really exciting alternative to screening, which is the, the typical paradigm, because we can essentially ask the model to come up with new ideas for us, right? These models are coming up with new hypotheses, new structures of, of molecules that are predicted to have uh, a good set of properties. Now, these models aren't perfect right now. There have been you know, dozens or hundreds of studies even in the past few years, but there are a number of pretty significant limitations that we're still trying to address. So in particular, uh, these type of models that generate new molecular structures tends to be very data inefficient. So it might take them hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of guesses before they find a molecule that actually does have the properties we wanted to have. And if you think about evaluating molecules with experiments, uh, we don't want to run hundreds of thousands of experiments on new molecules. If you think about a typical drug discovery campaign for a small molecule, it could involve in total synthesizing hundreds to thousands of different structures. And so we have these models which, which can identify optimal structures by proposing new molecules, getting information about their performance, and iterating in a closed loop fashion. But it takes them far too long to get to the right answer. And so one of the directions of the group has been to try to accelerate that process by making these models much more efficient 
in terms of the number of evaluations required to identify these, these good performing structures.